Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I am Giancarlo Spinoza, and I have the pleasure today to share this presentation with uh, uh, Sli Wan Chuk, postdoc of Amanecer Project, and Juan Pablo Sierra, PhD student also of the Amanecer Project. Uh, we are working in the EGU, Institut de Géosciences de l'Environnement, in Grenoble, in, in France. And we, uh, the aim of this presentation is um, to show a general view about the Amanecer Project, uh, which is related to the Amazon Andes connectivity facing climate change and Amazon deforestation. This project is part of uh, Make Our Planet Great Again program and also funding uh, for, uh, by IRD, Institut de Recherche pour le Développement uh, from France. So um, the Amazon River Basin is uh, the, the world largest tropical rainforest uh, and also one of the most critical elements of the Earth climate system. So the Amazon River provides around 20% of the total freshwater discharge to the global oceans, which also includes sediments and nutrients that, that come mostly from the, from the tropical Andes. In addition, up to 50% of the Amazon precipitation is regionally recycled by mean the evapotranspiration of the tropical, uh, uh, tropical forest. This process sustains a high flow of moisture in the atmosphere, we know as Arial River. Note that the quantity of water that, um, that is exported by the, Amazon, uh, by, by the Amazon River is more or less equivalent to the water that is exported in the atmosphere by mean this uh, Arial River. So this area river are a critical source of energy and water to the atmosphere, and they play a key role in modulate the, the large scale atmosphere circulation pattern, for instance, water circulation in the, in the tropical region. So the Amazon basin provide key condition for the global energy and water balance. Regarding regional water balance, in this figure, we, we observe the fraction of mean annual rainfall in tropical South America that has been previously transpired by trees in the Amazon basin. So we observe that in the west part of the Amazon basin and particularly over um, tropical Andes, around 40% or 50% of the annual precipitation has been previously transpired by trees in central Amazonia. This is particularly important because the rainy zone of the Amazon basin are situated in the east flank of the Andes. Here we observe up to 7,000 and 8,000 millimeters by years of precipitation, which are the records on the, Amazon, on the Amazon basin. And this region is also very important in terms of nutrients and sediment production from the, from the Andean lowland to, uh, from the Andean mountains for, for the Amazon lowland. Different studies have documented recently significant changes in the hydroclimatic regime of the Amazon River Basin. In this figure, for instance, we observe the evolution of water levels of the Amazon River in Manaus Hydrological Station in Brazil. This information is very important because it is, this is the only uh, hydrological station where the information is available since the beginning of the 20th century. So here we have a report an intensification in the frequency of extreme uh, floods as when, can be observed in, in blue points on this figure. Indeed, during the first half of the 20th century, we observed around one flood every 20 years. And uh, since the beginning of the 21th century, we observed one stream flood every four years. Regarding discharge during the low water season, we also report a significant diminution since the beginning of the 70s. And the major frequency of extreme droughts are also observed during the last decades. So different studies have documented an intensification in the frequency of uh, extreme hydrological events in the Amazon main stream, which is also related to an intensification, an intensification of the hydrological cycle on the, on the Amazon basin. Of course, this intensification also involves uh, historical records. For instance, the historical drought record has been observed in uh, 2010, while the historical record flood has been recently observed in Jan 2021. These changes in the hydroclimatic regime over the Amazonia has been associated with uh, regional changes in precipitation. For instance, here we observe a uh, rainfall trend analysis of the uh, Amazon basin during the last four decades. Here, uh, blue colors indicate a region characterized by an increase, a significant increase in precipitation, which is mainly observed in the north part of the Amazon basin. And in contrast, red colors indicate region characterized by a significant diminution of uh, precipitation, which is mainly observed in the south part of the, of the Amazon basin. 
A similar spatial pattern is observed when we analyze uh, evolution of river discharge over the main uh, Amazonian subbasin. For instance, blue colors indicate in the north an increase in river discharge and a reduction in red color in the south uh, part of the Amazon basin. These changes in the um, rainfall regime in Amazonia has been uh, associated with an intensification of the atmospheric huddle circulation in the tropical South America. For instance, during the last two, de two decades, we observe an increase in the ascending motion and convective activity of the north part of the Amazon basin, where an increase of precipitation is also observed. But in contrast, we also observe an in in intensification in the atmospheric subsidence in the south and so this part of the Amazon basin, uh, or where a uh, diminution of precipitation is also observed and an increase of the forest fire activity. So this, in order, uh, regarding this uh, diminution of precipitation in the southern part of the Amazon basin, this has been uh, mostly related to a lengthening of the dry season length in this, uh, over this region, the southern Amazonia. For instance, in this figure, we observe in blue line, the date of the dry season end uh, measured in pentads of the year, and red lines uh, correspond to the dry season length, also in pentads of a number of pentads of the, of the year. So of the southern Amazonia, we observed that dry season was increased in around one month since the beginning of the, of the 80s to the, to the present. In order to analyze the atmospheric, uh, the atmospheric uh, relation, uh, the atmospheric connection to this uh, lengthening of the dry season in southern Amazonia, in this recent study published in Journal of Climate, we have defined and analyzed um, large scale atmospheric circulation patterns or weather patterns in, in tropical South America. These atmospheric circulation patterns are defined using low level winds, uh, statistical methods for clustering, for instance, camins. So here in this figure, we, we observe the nine main atmospheric circulation patterns in tropical South America. What uh, this circulation pattern um, uh, represents the main atmospheric situation of, uh, of one particular region, in this case, tropical South America. So here, the uh, vectors are the low level winds and colors correspond to the anomalies of rainfall associated to each, each atmospheric circulation pattern. This analysis allows us to identify particular atmospheric situation related to dry condition, condition in tropical South America. And in this figure, uh, we observe the daily frequency of occurrence of each atmospheric circulation pattern around the year. So this is the temporal organization of this nine atmospheric circulation pattern. So here we observe some particular atmospheric circulation pattern which are uh, characteristic of the austral winter, for instance, circulation pattern seven, eight, and nine in red color on this figure. And also we observe some, uh, we, we identify some atmospheric circulation pattern mainly, mainly characteristic of the austral summer, for instance, circulation pattern three, four, and five in blue color on this figure. But in addition, this analysis allows us to identify some transitional atmospheric circulation pattern, which are observed during the transitional season. And more importantly, we uh, identify one particular circulation pattern, circulation pattern two in red color here, which is closely related to the onset of the South American monsoon system and um, related to the onset of the wet season in tropical South America. So we also analyze the temporal evolution of the frequency of this atmospheric circulation pattern. And we found two, uh, two uh, significant trends in this frequency of atmospheric circulation patterns in circulation pattern nine in red color on this figure and circulation pattern two in, in blue color on this figure. So we observe that the frequency of circulation pattern nine is significantly increased since the beginning of the 80s to the present. And in contrast, the, um, the frequency of occurrence of circulation pattern two was significantly decreased during the dry to wet transition zone. The results mean that more winter time atmospheric situation are observed during the dry to wet transition season during the last decades. And this result is closely related to the lengthening of the dry season in Southern Amazonia because circulation pattern nine is related to a low level wind divergence over Southern Amazonia. And also this atmospheric circulation pattern is related to an intensification of the hardly circulation with an, an increase of, um, of uh, uh, upper motion in the north part of the continent, but an increase of the atmospheric subsidence of uh, Southern Amazonia, which is of course related to uh, dry conditions uh, over this region.
The internal variability of the frequency of circulation pattern nine is also closely related to uh, the forest fire activity of the southern Amazonia. For instance, in this figure, we observe and a scatter plot between the anomalies of active fire at cones in southern Amazonia during, during September, October season, which is the season more sensitive for, for the forest fire activity in Amazonia. And here we observe the frequency of uh, circulation pattern nine during this uh, season, September and October. So our results show that over the Brazilian state of Maranhão, Tocantins, and Goiás, and even in Sao Paulo uh, region, the seasonal uh, frequency of circulation pattern nine can explain around 40% of the interannual variation of uh, fire count. So uh, due to this uh, climate change and also intensification of Amazon deforestation, today um, the Amazon River Basin is considered as a biophysical system in transition. Indeed, today around 17% of the total Amazon surface has been already deforested. And this process, unfortunately, is expected to continue in the future as observed in this figure, mainly in the south and southeast part of the, of the Amazon basin. So um, regarding climate change, since the beginning of the 70s, more frequent and intense extreme drought have been observed, particularly in the southern part of the Amazon basin. And the last two decades have been uh, the, the warmest record since the last century. So due to this, uh, this uh, environmental changes, Today, there are, there are a scientific consensus about uh, the, a real risk of a tipping point of the Amazon rainforest. And the main question is uh, um, how uh, soon that may happen. For more details about the possible uh, tipping point in the Amazon rainforest, you can see the conclusions of the science panel for the Amazon, uh, also with the contribution of the Manuser project. We have published a, a report uh, the last year uh, in, in the context of, uh, of science panel of the Amazon. So uh, in this context, a manager project provide an observational and numerical modeling approaches in order to, um, to analyze two main scientific questions. The first, the first one is related to how global warming and regional modification of land cover could affect the regional and global water cycle. And the second one is related to how will connectivity between the Andes and the Amazon be affected. The second question also involves changes in sediment and nutrient fluxes that come from the Mon uh, Andean mountains to the Amazon lowland. And also this question involves uh, the, the evolution of water resource for the Andean, for the Andean cities. In that uh, a million of people in the Andean cities, uh, water, water resources for the million of people in the Andean cities closely related to uh, Amazonian area rivers. So now we, we will show you two specific studies uh, recently published in the context of the Manasar project. The third one, the first one is by Sli Won Chuk, postdoc of the Amanecer, and second one from Juan Pablo Sierra, a PhD of the Amanecer project. Uh, so uh, for more details about uh, our main scientific results, um, you can see our new uh, website, uh, new website of the Amanecer project. You can see also more details about our team, uh, about our public, full publication list, and also documentation for policymakers and uh, stakeholders. Thank you very much. So we will continue with the presentation of Sli Wonchuk. Sli, if you can share your screen, please. Yes, of course. So the question will be at the end of the final. The I, I think that, I think that, yeah. Okay. okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, it works. It's okay. Presentation. I will start. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Sli Wonchi. I'm a postdoc a researcher for the Amanacel project. So my work is mainly focused to understand uh, water cycle changes uh, related with deforestation in the southern Amazonia. So we made we did two approaches, basically based in observations and also uh, with models. Uh, so here I will uh, show you the results of the paper that uh, we published last year. Uh, which uh, um, analyzed the water cycle changes related with deforestation at the regional point of view, based in 40 years of observations. So uh, our study was mainly focused in the southern Amazon, which uh, uh, belongs to the south part of the, or the south of eight degrees sur. And why this region? Because as you can see in the map, you can uh, this region has uh, highest forest loss 
in comparison with the northern part, and also because there is a strong rainfall seasonality. So many studies already documented that the hydroclimatology in this region has already been changed in the last decades, uh, mainly related with uh, land cover changes. But uh, many of these studies are mainly focused only in the Brazilian region. And here we will study all the region and using a uh, more uh, spatial um, approach. So the scientific question here was how these relationships between deforestation and hydroclimatology are relevant at different scales, mainly at regional and sub-regional scale. So to do that, we related hydroclimate variables with uh, deforestation rate. So these uh, hydroclimate variables were the main components of the water and energy balance, which are precipitation, potential, and actually of transpiration uh, from chirps and glean data sets, uh, respectively. So we associated each of these hydroclimate uh, variables or pixels with the surrounded uh, ratio of the forested areas which were computed within a, a 50 kilometers buffer. So as main results, we found that for precipitation, as you can see in the map, uh, there is a significant decrease in precipitation mainly located in the Southern Amazon, which belongs to the Bolivia. So in the right uh, figure or right panel, you can see the scatter plot that relates precipitation trend and deforestation. And so we observe it that for areas about 40% uh, of uh, deforestation, uh, precipitation only decreased systematically. And for potential evapotranspiration, we observe it a systematic uh, increase in almost all the uh, South Amazon, Southern Amazon. So this is due to main factors. First, uh, we observe it and uh, this increase in the Western part which was already been documented in many papers, which is related with a global and large scale warming, and also in regions, regions with highest deforested area, which are um, related because uh, changes in energy partitioning toward an increase in sensible heat flux due to uh, land cover changes. For actual evapotranspirations, we uh, observe it a, a dipole, that means we observed uh, an increase in actual evapotranspirations in non-deforested non areas, uh, which uh, follows the same trend and potential evapotranspiration. It means an increase. But also, we found a decrease in uh, highest deforested areas, mainly uh, associated uh, because this um, uh, new land cover that are mainly cropland are, uh, has uh, less uh, access to soil moisture from deepest root zone in comparison with uh, forest, uh, tropical forest. So, so far we analyzed individual uh, variables, but now we uh, also made an analysis that integrates all, this, all of these uh, variables by uh, doing, uh, uh, but performing uh, surface water and energy balance for decadal periods. So for that, we use a Budico framework. So this Budico framework relates uh, these three variables and divided in two main indexes. So in the axis X, we uh, see the dryness index that relates potential of transpiration and precipitation. And that means that for highest values, the climate uh, are more warmer or drier. And in the axis Y, we see the evaporative index that relates uh, actual evapotranspiration and precipitation. That means that for highest values, uh, there is less runoff or less uh, water available in the soil. But here we will focus on the, our analysis in the dryness index. So this dryness index uh, has a threshold that divides two main zones, the energy limited and the water limited zone. That means in the water limited zone, the climate conditions are more favorable to develop tropical forests. And besides, for water limited zone, the climate uh, conditions are more favorable to develop uh, savanna uh, conditions. So, for example, a transition from tropical forest to savanna, it means that there is uh, more conditions to, um, to a savanization of, of a tropical forest. 
So here we analyzed the salt Amazon in Bolivia. And we can see here the Budico framework uh, for the first decadal period. And you can see that many of the pixels are uh, located in the dryness index uh, zone. And also you can see here the uh, distribution of frequency for uh, low and highest uh, deforested areas. And main, uh, both of them are mainly located in the brightness index zone, in the uh, energy limited zone, sorry. And when we see, we observe it that for the uh, last period, uh, la the last decade, many of these pixels became uh, water limited. That means that they are in more conditions of to develop the savanna conditions. And they are mainly related with uh, areas uh, with highest deforestation, as you can see in the distribution plot in red color. So if we see this uh, behavior, uh, especially uh, this uh, trend of dryness index is increasing in the solar arms. <clears throat> so as I summarized, the key messages here were there is a decrease in precipitation systematically observed in the southern Amazon. There is an increase in potential evapotranspiration systematically observed in almost all South America, all uh, southern Amazon, sorry. And this is um, due to two main factors, global and also more local or regional scale or conditions. And also there is a decrease in actual evapotranspiration. This is mainly related with highest deforested areas. And if we see this uh, as an integration of these variables, uh, there is an increase in brightness index or a process or a more trend of savanization in uh, mainly located in the solar Amazon. So, so far we made our analysis based in observations, but now <clears throat> we, uh, we, we assess it, uh, new approaches using uh, models, in this case, more specifically a copy model uh, so the advantage to use uh, this copy model is to uh, uh, we can uh, assess these variables or this we can represent these physical processes by considering uh, the feedbacks between surface and atmosphere. So uh, we uh, performed a couple uh, a couple of, uh, atmospheric and land surface model uh, which are WARF and Orchide at 20 kilometers of uh, space resolution for uh, 19 years. And we uh, performed this analysis for the old South America. This is, was a collaboration between the Amanacer project and the REC, uh, REC, uh, IPCL in Paris. So we performed two simulations. The first one is the control, uh, that means uh, our current conditions. And the second one is the um, scenario of uh, 2050 which is a scenario of uh, land cover changes. So we replace it, the forest by uh, cropland. So this is a, a, scenario, a projected scenario uh, based in the business as usual uh, scenario until uh, the 2050 years. So the main objective of this uh, research was to analyze how uh, the main components of the surface and atmospheric water balance changes due to deforestation. So for example, we have, we have here for the atmos atmospheric water balance, the precipitation of transpiration, the humidity uh, convergence in the atmosphere, and the uh, uh, variation of uh, precipitable water. And also for surface, we have also uh, runoff and, and the variation of uh, water storage in the soil. So the scientific question is, here and how this uh, surface and atmospheric water balance components changed due to deforestation. And thanks, that's all for me. Thank you, Lee. So uh, in order to analyze how this uh, in, uh, changes in, uh, in the Amazon deforestation um, in the mm -hmm. atmosphere and particularly in the water cycle, in the regional water cycle, uh, and more specifically over the Amazon and Andes connection, um, Juan Pablo Sierra was developed, is, is, is working as PhD uh, on this research question. So this is the, the third presentation. Go ahead, Juan Pablo, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, okay. I am Juan Pablo Sierra and I am a PhD student, part of the Amanecer project. And the title of the presentation today is Deforestation Impacts on Amazon Andes Hydroclimatic Connectivity. So the main question uh, in this work is how can Amazon deforestation alter the regional climate? But this is a really big, big question. So we uh, made more specific uh, we split this question in more specific objectives. The first one is uh, analyze the impacts of Amazonian deforestation on the connection between Amazon and the Andes, but only during the rainy season. This is uh, from December to February. Here we use uh, the regional climate model WORF with two scenarios, control and deforested. Uh, control are uh, vegetation conditions for the year 2000 and the deforested scenario that is Lee described before. And we use 10 years of simulations only in tropical South America. But the second part of our work is based on analyzing the uh, impacts of deforestation on the rainy season over the Southern Amazonia. So here we use the simulation that is Lee described before with the collaboration with the team of REC IPCL. Here we have 20 years of simulation over the entire South America and on the complete year, not only in the rainy season. So the first part of the work, we have published a paper uh, already in the Climate Dynamics Journal so as a motivation, Giancarlo talked a little bit about this. Uh, over the Andes, millions of people depends on water resources that are uh, generated or over the tropical Andes. You can see here, for example, that uh, main cities in South America are located over the Andes. And uh, most of the rainfall falling in this part of the Andes uh, is originated from the Amazon basin. And also in the eastern flank of the Andes, uh, the rainfall falling in this area transport and produce sediments toward the Amazon. As you can see in this plot, for example, you, you are looking rivers inside the Amazon basin and the thicker the line, uh, the more sediments are transported for river. And you can see that, for example, Solimos and Madeira rivers uh, transport a lot of sediments uh, instead of Orinoco that comes from the north and not, and not from the Anden part. So in uh, normal conditions during December to February, we have uh, Easterly winds coming from the Atlantic Ocean and transporting a lot of moisture. Those are the vectors in this plot, transporting a lot of moisture toward the continent. And these air masses gain more extra moisture because of the rainforest transpiration. Those are the blue colors in this plot. And this allows uh, high precipitation values in the Amazon and also in the eastern flank of the Andes. But with deforestation, we find that we, has, we have less entry of moisture uh, from the Atlantic Ocean. Also, we have less evapotranspiration. Uh, those are red colors here. And we end with uh, less precipitation in the central Amazonia and also in the eastern flank of the Andes. So when we do average when we average uh, moisture flux sonally, uh, we can see that we have subsidence, less moisture ascension and wind ascension in the southern Amazon and a decrease in this north to south moisture flux. This is a characteristic weakening of the South American monsoon. So this regional atmospheric uh, circulation and moisture flux and precipitation is uh, caused by what happened at surface with deforestation. So when we change forest by croplands, uh, croplands reflects more solar radiation than forest. So this is an energy loss. 
and also crops are warmer than forests, so they radiate more energy toward the atmosphere. This is also an energy. <coughs> and uh, with deforestation, the atmosphere is drier, and the, a drier atmosphere radiates less radiation toward the surface. This is also a energy loss. So, so when we made the, the complete balance, at the surface, the net surface radiation is decreased with deforestation. And this, is co this causes all the uh, changes in regional circulation that I described before. When we analyze what happened in this particular region, the transition region between the Amazon and the Andes, and we analyze the daytime and nighttime conditions. During the day, we have precipitation over lowlands, Amazon lowlands, and also in the upper part of the Andes. But during the night, precipitation is mainly observed in the eastern flank of the Andes, in the rainfall hotspots. But with deforestation, during the day, we have less precipitation over the deforested area. But during the night, the reductions are mainly in the eastern flank of the Andes. And this is related with, with normal, in normal conditions, is if we see in this uh, square, green square, we have uh, moisture flux coming from the Amazon toward the upper part of the Andes. Those are the vectors in this plot. But with deforestation, this moisture flux is decreasing and this caused uh, this reduction in rainfall. Then we analyze what happened in an Andean Valley at a very local uh, scale with a high resolution in our model. So the red dots are meteorological stations. And we first analyze how is the uh, spatial variability of rainfall inside the Songo Valley. And those are the, uh, the blue uh, squares here. And the blue line is the model under control conditions. So we can see that precipitation here uh, is less in the upper part of the basin, uh, in the upper part of the valley, and is more or is higher in the lower part. And the model represents this. But with deforestation, is the red line here, we have a reduction. Then we split daytime and nighttime conditions. And basically, during nighttime, there is this reduction that I explained before in the climatology. And this is related with the, uh, a decrease. In normal conditions, we have this transport from the Amazon lowlands toward the Andes. And with deforestation, this moisture transport is decreased, and mainly during the night. So as a summary, deforestation uh, affects at very local uh, scales the albedo, the reflection of solar radiation. And at the end, we have less uh, available energy at the surface. And this, is, this causes uh, more regional changes. This uh, weakens the South American monsoon in general. And uh, causes also a reduction in precipitation of about 20%. But um, at more local scales, precipitation is decreased mainly during night because the moisture transport uh, at the mid troposphere is reduced under deforestation conditions. So the second part is um, in a paper uh, in preparation and is mainly based in something that Giancarlo explained very quick, quickly before. Uh, the, here we decompose the atmospheric regional circulation variability in nine uh, atmospheric states. And Giancarlo talked about we uh, identified a particular atmospheric state or circulation pattern that is very related with the onset of the rainy season in the Southern Amazon. So we wanted to analyze how deforestation can impact the onset of the rainy season in terms of how are these atmospheric uh, 
circulation patterns are changed under a deforestation scenario. So here, for example, we took the southern uh, part of the basin and we analyze the rainfall annual cycle. We identify the wet season onset and we analyze how is the change in the atmospheric states uh, or the circulation patterns during the days before and after the wet season onset. Here, the red vertical line is the day of the onset, and you see in colors the circulation pattern frequency before and after the onset. So the, the circulation pattern CP2 uh, that is more frequent just in the day zero in the onset of the wet season. And we analyze what happened with deforestation. For example, in this case, with deforestation, we can see that these southerly winds, those are cold introductions that are very important for triggering precipitation in the southern part of the Amazon, are uh, weakening with the with deforestation. And we also analyze the frequency of this CP under con normal conditions, the blue line, and under deforested condition is the red line. And we find that deforestation reduces the frequency of this particular uh, atmospheric state. So this is related with a delay of the rainy season onset. So the last message is that deforestation perturbates uh, at that very local scale, uh, for example, reduces evapotranspiration and energy losses at very local scale, but these uh, perturbations are become more regional in the atmospheric circulation during the rest of the year. So thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot, uh, Juan Carlo. Uh, Juan Pablo and Lai for your presentations. Um, I'll open the floor for the discussion. Um, as normal, you can either put your question into the question and answer tool, into the chat, or raise your hand. I will then uh, uh, provide time for the discussion of your question. Um, I don't see any yet, so I will maybe start with one. Okay, maybe that was, uh, yeah, that's now, okay. Um, I'll still ask my question. Um, how much of this was now uh, related to the atmospheric uh, fluxes and uh, uh, transport of water, but you also had in the talk the connection to the groundwater. And I, I wonder how much um, groundwater levels are also impacted by deforestation. Or maybe it's a stupid first question, but still I, I wondered. Very interesting question and very complicated also. I think that it is mostly part of the work of, of Sly where we analyze also all, all of the variables of the, of the uh, surface water balance, including, including water in the, in the soil. So Sly, you can provide some elements of, to answer this question, this complex question. Mm, yeah, of course. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, yes, uh, actually the, this changes on uh, on water uh, depends obviously in this case of the how the model represents this, uh, this, uh, these processes. So for the last simulation we made uh, with uh, Worf and Orchide, we observed that um, in the scenario of deforestation, uh, there is an increase in groundwater. It's because uh, uh, there is less of transpiration, so there is more uh, water available in the soil, or is less evapotranspirated. So this uh, this water is is, is is storage in the in the warm water. So that's how uh, orchide represents these this processes. What would that would that mean that there's also hope that uh, like because the water is yeah yeah saved in the ground that one yeah. could still plant trees and uh, get them growing again. The, so to say, the the ground is not lost uh, if it's deforested once. Yeah, yeah. But now we enter to the the other question that is uh, the the ecological part. It means 
uh, how, how, um, how are the how the forest uh, cover are dependent of you're more dependent of groundwater or are more dependent on uh, atmospheric conditions. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a work that is not my my field. I, <laughs> I think mm -hmm. it yeah. depends on the kind of, of forest or the kind of uh, vegetation. Yeah, the, the other the other results from the work of Slee is also that um, yes, of course, we have more uh, water in the soil uh, induced by deforestation, but this water is is run off very easy, very quickly in some month. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the discharge and runoff also increase uh, some month before the, the so, so, so sorry, some month after the, the the increase of water in the soil. So this this mm -hmm. uh, the role of the of the soil um, stock for the stock the water is is also weak in the, under mm -hmm. the first scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and now we have questions. First by Jim. Them, please. Yes, thanks. That was a wonderful talk. And um, I, I, I think the um, kind of the use of graphics to just sort of interpret these, these changes on a geographic scale was really terrific. Um, it was a lot to try to um, assimilate. Um, so it, it looks like this trend, we, we have sort of this decreased flow onto the continent from, from the Northeast up and and that's or that I, I guess it's an increased flow up there and this decreased uh, southerly flow into the south. And I, I, I guess I, I sort of have, have two questions. Are, so those two things are related through the fact that um, you know down in this region where you're working or you're looking at the sort of east flank of the Andes and the southerly part um, is the strength, I guess, of those two, uh, airstreams coming onto the continent. Um, so I wonder if you could just say a little bit more about that. And the other thing is um, in, in these areas where you're getting sort of this increased aridification uh, going on due to land cover, um, are you seeing evidence for, or, or are you at least anticipating uh, transitions to more savanna-like conditions already? The, the remnant uh, forest patches, as PET and climbs, um, are, are you seeing evidence that this is having having this um, savannification going on now? So, th so that was two questions. Thank you, James. Oh, re regarding the, fir the first question, uh, yeah, we have uh, document on, on contrasted changes in the in rainfall in between north and southern Amazonia. Yeah, in the northern Amazonia, we, we, we observe an intensification of the convective activity, mainly related to the, to the ascending moisture of the hardly circulation. So the hardly circulation is intensified during the last two or three decades, not only in Amazonia, but, all, but in, in, the, in, the, in the world, the, the, the global hardly circulation. But in the tropical South America, we observe this uh, increase in the, in, in the convective activity in the, in the northern part of the Amazonia. And uh, the, the, uh, the subsidence branch of the hardly circulation is also increased. Uh, this is um, observed in the southern part of the, of the Amazon basin. Of course, hardly circulation migrate north south around the year. But uh, during September, October, November, which is uh, the, the dry to wet transition season, the subsidence is strongly increased in the southern Amazonia. So we have a, a dry season, an extended dry season, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one month, uh, one month longer than during the last uh, during the last decades compared to the to this to the 80s yeah this this is for the for the intensification of, of the hydrological cycle in amazonia second question was uh, what's about, about the co2 of the amazon, amazon savanization that's right well yeah in these areas where i so i guess what you're saying is the um in the north this is ultimately a strong driver of this is the um, increased flow onto the continent in, in, in the north mm. due to increased convection. Um, and, and so in the areas that are being affected by this Amazonian circulation <clears throat> effect, um, in the remnant forests, are you starting to see evidence of any savannification going on? Yeah, I think that the an interesting point that the, the work of Sly is that um, we identify a region where um, 
are uh, mostly uh, potential to be, to be changes to savannas because the dryness index is increasing a lot. Mm. Uh, yeah, but, but this is, this is, uh, this is uh, under, the, under the, the debate on scientific uh, community because there is not so easy to observe this Amazon savannization and this uh, tipping point with using models it's possible but in observation is already complicated so and we have uh, 20 30 years of observation so it is uh, this is only a complicated point yes i don't know is lee if you want to complete everything uh, no no uh, as you said uh, Giancarlo, yes it's not easy with observation because uh with our analysis we didn't um, separate it which uh, forest changes are more for uh, natural conditions, it means climate conditions, or, or are deforested by a human uh, uh, intervention. So, so but uh, if we only analyze the climate conditions, we saw that uh, the, um, the trend to uh, savanization is really increasing, a well, significant increase in the southern, southern part of the Amazon basin. Yeah, the forest inventory plots show mortality events associated with these big droughts that you mentioned. Um, I guess I don't know that there's information on the recruitment that's following that. Is that species that are uh, um, can, can tolerate more droughts? So anyway, thank, thanks a lot. Very helpful. No, thanks. Okay, next one is Shen Wang. Please, Shen. Okay, so uh, just I had a very quick question first is, uh, um, when you do the modeling um, uh, work, I understand you have to prescribe the uh, SST. So did you use the uh, climatology or you use uh, actually um, so-called observational um, data um, to drive your simulation? Yeah, yeah for for the control uh, simulation, uh, the main forcing were for era five, mm -hmm. and uh, the current observations land cover maps. So where yearly cover maps can change uh, yeah, every every year, uh, obviously. And um, yeah, we for the for the second one for the second simulations, we only change the the PFT, the, the plant function and types that we transform into forest to cropland. Okay. But the model, but this, uh, the model are forced in the boundaries yeah. by real yeah. for instance, of other variables, but we don't use uh, observation for the simulation process in the model. The, the model is turning uh, uh, with the physical yeah. process, yes. It's just uh, forced in the boundaries, yeah. Yeah, I saw this because so actually there's a, you know, quite a bit uh, uh, review, very good uh, review paper by Dean Wong and others on the global uh, monsoon system. So there's a variability, large scale variability. I and I understand uh, because the data limitation, uh, you only have 20 years or so, it's uh, hard to conclude anything. Uh, I mean, just uh, uh, here's the two factors, for example, many factors, two major factors could could apply to one's uh, uh, deforestation, which is uh, actually change the local, uh, the, the land, the uh, water and the radiation. Another is a uh, you know variability on the large scale, more larger scale like the ocean and other. So maybe yeah, I was just wondering if you um, you know compare the Amazonia and the South Sar South Sar uh, actually South American <laughs> monsoon system uh, compared to the other major monsoon system. Uh, did you find anything you know uh, curious? Uh, for example, uh, in the North Atlantic, major monsoon system had a shift of the onside. Um, and also the weakness, uh, the variability seems to have, you know, showing some sort of a long-term trend on the monsoon strength. So I'm not sure, I'm not quite familiar with, because Amazonia, a lot of the study is uh, only regional. So I, I don't know if you're looking at the monsoon system scale, uh, whether there was a similar change on that. So um, I, I know this is not, have a question to answer. I'll just throw out, uh, throw out something. Uh, last question, I, I, I'm wondering, you didn't mention, seems, or maybe I, I missed, uh, it's uh, the precipitation statistic change. Have you observed, at least for the modeling, you have a two model, um, 
for example, the PDF of the, uh, the pixel base or even the base of a presentation characteristics, so like, you know, um, sort of a, you know, uh, sort of a, the PDF of uh, the rain rate or, or all these uh, uh, kind of things. Uh, I might miss, uh, but I, yeah, I, I didn't remember you mentioned that. Um, in particular, you have a two models, uh, uh, control and uh, forestation. So did you see any, you know, uh, curious change uh, between these two, two mm -hmm. runs? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, regarding changes in the PDF or, or precipitation in the north part of the Amazon basin, there are an increase of, of, uh, of intense events. So the very, very, okay. very high values in, in few time. Yeah, in the, the north, it is, it is, it is mostly related to an intensification of the, of the convective activity of this region. Mm -hmm. yes. And regarding observation and modeling, the, the comparison between both uh, the evolution of the, the forest and atmosphere interaction in observation and in modeling, I think that one important difference is that uh, during the last three decades, four decades, the main uh, changes in observed, uh, the main observed changes has been uh, a reduction of precipitation in the south. This reduction of precipitation in the south is leading more of uh, most of the, of the changes, for instance, in the Bojuko framework showed by Slee. But in the modeling, the change is not a lot in precipitation, but also, but more is in, uh, in the evapotranspiration. The evapotranspiration is the variable most impacted by in the, in the modeling scenarios of, uh, of uh, Amazon deforestation. And then these changes in, in evapotranspiration also modify the main large scale atmosphere circulation pattern that has shown Juan Pablo. So we, we think that there are very different uh, impacts and cascading effects regarding observation and, uh, and modeling. Yeah, this is uh, very interesting. We need to analyze a little, a little more yeah. these differences and similarities yeah. between observation and, and, uh, and modeling changes. Yeah, it's a very interesting point. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Alessandra, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Giancarlo and colleagues. I also have a question that kind of follows on from uh, this discussion. And that is that uh, considering the large scale again, it may be expected that this uh, southern part of Am the Amazon actually dry with warming if one follows the ideas of kneeling. And so the idea that the core convection gets wetter, but the margin dries. So I don't know if uh, you have a way, considering that there's variability and there's change and there's trends and there's deforestation, what you can say about that, whether that's a hypothesis to exclude or uh, whether there's an element of that also meaning, you know, so the margin drying as a consequence of the large scale circulation responding to warming. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Actually, in the, the forested scenario, um, we use, uh, we only change the land surface condition, but the, but the large scale is, is totally the same. So um, the, the, the model also reproduced changes in the, in, at the regional, at regional in, in tropical South America, actually, because the, um, the boundary conditions are, are the same for control and the forested scenario. But of course, there are also uh, um, links between between the, the regional and the large scale, uh, yeah, between both regions. We are also thinking with colleagues from LMD in Paris in order to use uh, uh, LMDZ model at the global scale in order to analyze how the forestation in Amazonia can impact global uh, Hadley and, and Walker circulation, for instance. Yeah. Juan Pablo, I don't know if you have another comment about this. Uh, uh, I don't know because, yeah, we have uh, at the boundaries, we have the influence of the information coming from the large scale. And as we have 20 years of simulation, we have also a little bit of information of the warming signal, the global warming signal. So the only thing that I think we can uh, we can conclude with with this limited information is that in in this uh, kind of soft warming scenario, if we deforest, uh, we will have we will have this uh, 
20% reduction of precipitation, for example, in, in the Amazon during, during the austral summer. Uh, but for analyzing how, how deforestation can um, modify or amplify the warming, the, the, the global warming, we need to, to, do, to perform um, coupling with, with a global climate model in order to get more conclusions about, about this. Okay, um, maybe I have another question or one or two uh, more related to the um, like political situation or political uh, and, and impacts on life. Um, I, I, for example, I wonder, um, I mean, here we, we see that often now it's called, okay, these products are sustainable and we uh, balance the carbon uh, dioxide uh, budget of, of uh, for example, transport, etc., cetera, by, by mitigation measures. And uh, I think that, uh, okay, they, these, these companies, etc., they somehow have to buy the CO2, so to say. And therefore, I wonder, seeing also the uh, drastic effects of deforestation in the in the Amazon, I wonder if forestation is already a, a, a business model there that actually companies come and say, okay, we actually use the, the area that's free now uh, to actually create uh, or bind, bind uh, CO2. Yes, yeah, this, is, this is important. Um, and it's even more important regarding the, the, the current agreement of, um, of uh, 30 by 30, which uh, each country is um, uh, expect to protect uh, at least 30 percent of its, its territory from 2013. So, uh, and we have discussion with several uh, ONGs, uh, or also in Peruvian ministry, for instance, about the whole choice, this region in Amazonia, the whole choice, the region to protect in Amazonia what criteria we need to use, how we can measure this, uh, uh, the um, efficacy of this, uh, these uh, criteria. For instance, um, yeah, zones that produce more CO2 or more um, grand, uh, greenhouse gases is, is one criteria, but also biodiversity. Uh, and also region that produce uh, aerial rivers for water, water, water resources in the, in, the and, in the Andes, for instance. So yeah, this is an important thing, and also I thinking about the, the national con national uh, contribution that that each country needs to report in the, in the context of the Paris Agreement, and each country is, is um, expect to reduce the emissions of CO2 or greenhouse gases, but if deforestation is increased, the Amazonian country continue to continue to to, uh, to continue, it is a, a real source of CO2, so which is not, not necessarily taken into account in the national reports for the contributions. So yeah, it's um, a very interesting point of discussion. And, and we, in the Manesar project, we provide more information about what, what, what is the key region in order to conserve and in order to, to, yeah, to, to, to for the preservation and for more politi politically interesting. That, that this is the yeah. idea. That is about protection. Do you see also already forestation projects going on? And, and is there uh, activity to uh, provide uh, political guidance also or ecological guidance, what to plant, uh, how to do it? Or is that uh, a field that's not yet? For, for instance, our discussion is about the protection of, of areas. Yeah, of course, it makes sense to, to uh, I mean, to uh, reduce the, the destruction. I mean, I fully agree, but I mean, realistically, there's also a lot of areas that actually require already deforestation. Yeah. And is there something going on or not? It's a good point, yeah. Okay, and, and maybe last question, what about the, uh, so you expect strong changes in water supply to the Andes region. Is there already mitigation strategies or are the, the countries discussing this, how to cope with, with that? Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, during the last decade, most of the tropical Andean countries have uh, show up discuss about mitigation of water supply regarding uh, glacier retreats in this region, because as right, glacier is also a retreat. But never these countries have uh, thinking about the deforestation Amazon impacts on water 
of this region. How we are showing that deforestation in Amazonia has a stronger impact in, in terms of uh, water availability over this region. So in terms of uh, providing new evidences, this is very important for the, for the Marisol project. Yeah, we have in this, in this uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, no, not tomorrow, the Wednesday I have a meeting with the Peruvian Minister of Environment to talk about this, for instance. This is, um, this is very, very important for, for our project, yeah.